If you love Reuben sandwiches, then you are not going to want to miss this video. Stay tuned. Welcome back to Mama Needs a Gold. Thank you so much for joining me today. And if you're new here, welcome, welcome. So friends, today it is another rainy, dreary, and chilly day. I do not function well on days like this. I need the sun or I am just, I just don't get a lot accomplished. The one thing I'm going to accomplish today is making a big pot of soup. Now, as I mentioned, if you like Reuben sandwiches, you're going to like this video. I am making a Reuben soup. That's right, a Reuben soup. I am so excited to make this. I have never had or made Reuben soup. I've had um, Reuben casseroles, which I will link that recipe for you. Um, I do have a video on that and it was really good. So today I am going to try out this recipe I found over at Spicy Southern Kitchen and I will link the full recipe in the description box. It sounds delicious and I am excited to try this. So let me stop talking, turn the camera, turn the camera around and we'll quickly go over all the ingredients and get the soup made. Okay, my friends. So back there we have some half and half. I have a bag of sauerkraut. I had had two bags of that in my freezer. It really only calls for, uh, I think it's like a 14 and a half ounce can. Um, so I'm going to just use what I have on hand instead of buying another thing of sauerkraut. So I'm just going to divide that in half. I have some flour back there, beef broth, Worcestershire sauce, Thousand Island dressing. I have some um, garlic. I have a cup and a half of Swiss cheese. I um, shredded an eight ounce block and the leftovers on the paper plate is going to go on top of some um, homemade croutons. Some butter, cara, cara, <laughs> cara caraway seed, um, some prepared horseradish, cayenne pepper, calls for a sweet onion, I'm using red onion, and there's some rye bread, I'm going to put that um, cheese on that rye bread and toast it in the oven and then cut it up for some croutons. I have one celery stalk, and then I'm going to insert real quick right now, so I'm going to insert real quick right now a... Um, a uh, corned beef that I cooked last night so you can see what that looks like and then we'll come back and I'll talk about it. So friends, I am going to be making a Reuben soup. Yes, that is correct, a Reuben soup. Now, I am filming this portion the night before because I am actually going to be cooking my corned beef. Now, I had purchased this and had it in the freezer and I'm gonna go ahead and cook it. It's gonna take about two hours or so, um, anywhere between one and a half to two and a half hours. I'll have to um, check it with my um, meat thermometer, but this is what it looks like. So I'm gonna cook this tonight, that way it's cooked, and then tomorrow I can just slice it thin for the soup. But I just wanted to sh quickly show you what I have. So let me turn the camera down. I'm gonna show you how I cook this in case you actually want to cook one and not go to the deli and get sliced corned beef, which probably would be easier, but I had this. Okay, so I have a pan here with a little rack in it. I have about an inch or so of water in the bottom of the pan because we're going to cover it and kind of like steam it. There's a little packet, the seasoning packet that comes in there. We are going to be using that. I'm going to take my corned beef out, put it on the rack that side up. All right, now I'm gonna go ahead and take my packet here. Oops, make sure you don't get the plastic in it. <laughs> and I am just sprinkling this all over my beef, just like that. Okay. And then I'm just taking foil, wrapping it this way and then I'll take another piece 
wrap it the other way or kind of on each end because I want to make sure that it kind of like steams it. Then I'm going to cook it on 300 for about anywhere between one and a half, two and a half hours. I'll be checking on it and making sure. All right, my friends, so I'm going to go ahead and put this in the oven. And then when it's done, I'll come back on. I'm doing this late at night. I think it's what time is it? Seven o'clock. But I'll check in with you when it's all done and show you what it looks like. All right, we're going to go ahead and take this out. It's been in for two hours. We need to be super careful because of the steam. And then we're going to do a quick test of the internal temperature. Okay. Make sure it's at 165 at least. Oh, yeah. Definitely. All right, so now I'm going to go ahead and just put it back in the oven for about 10 minutes and then we'll take it out and let it cool. All right, there you go. So this is very hot. I'm just going to let it sit here and cool. It's after nine o'clock right now. Um, I'm going to let it sit and cool and then I'm just going to use that aluminum foil, wrap it up, put it in the fridge and then I will check back with you in the morning. All right, my friends, so that was the corned beef. I cooked the entire corned beef. I thought that I was gonna use half of it for today's recipe and the other half I was going to freeze and use it for a, another recipe I'm gonna be doing in March. But guess what? That right there is the entire piece of corned beef. That's how, I know they shrink when they cook, but I honestly had no idea. That's not even a pound. I was just shy of a pound and it calls for a pound. So I am really shocked, <laughs> I gotta admit. Um, so I'll be getting more corned beef for the other recipe. But anyway, that is all the ingredients that we're going to be using today. Pretty much most of the stuff you probably have already in the home. So anyway, let's me stop talking. Let's head over to the stove and get started. All right, my friends, I just turned on the heat and I have my pot getting hot so my butter will melt quickly. Just adding in two tablespoons of butter real quick. And while that was heating up, I emptied out my um, sauerkraut into a wire um, strainer and squeezed all the excess juice out of it. I did a quick rinse, squeezed the excess juice out of it, and I have it like pushed up all around the sides of the wire strainer, just trying to get the last of the juice out. So I wanted to do that prep ahead of time. All right. We are going to go ahead and add in our onion. Okay, break that up a little bit. Diced up small, and then one stalk of celery dice. So we're going to go ahead and just kind of saute these just until um, our veggies become translucent. That should be about five minutes or so. And then after that, we will add in our garlic. So we'll check back in in a few. All right, my friends, we are good now. Now I'm gonna go ahead and add in a garlic clove. I always buy the jar of minced garlic because I use a lot. I'm going to stir that in for just about a minute. Okay, we're going to let this go for about a minute and then we're going to add our flour. All right, now we're going to go ahead in and add a quarter cup of flour. I'm going to stir that really well. that go just for about a minute or so as well and then we'll add our beef beef I want to say beef I don't know why <laughs> our beef broth okay now we're gonna add in three cups of beef broth it calls for two and a half to three so I just went ahead and 
Number three. So I am going to probably should use my whisk. Have my little handy dandy whisk. I whisk that up really well. There we go. Much better. Okay, now I'm just going to let this go until it simmers before we continue on. Alrighty, here we go. Alright, let's give it a stir. Just make sure nothing's stuck on the bottom. I'm going to turn this down a little bit lower. Alright, so now I have two cups of half and half and I'm going to pour that right in there just like that okay mix that well use my little whisk Okay, and now I have a half a cup of Thousand Island dressing. Friends, I hope, I hope this is good. I gotta be honest with you, I'm a little, I hear a truck out in the driveway, a little nervous. Tad bit nervous, gonna, not gonna lie. And now we're gonna add a teaspoon of Worcestershire sauce. Okay. And then lastly, I'm going to add in one and a half teaspoons of um, horseradish. I have a half a teaspoon of caraway seeds and I have a quarter te teaspoon of cayenne pepper. So we're going to go ahead and Add all that in there, just like that. Okay, and then we're gonna mix that well. I'm gonna use my little whisk. I like using that. Gets it mixed well. All right. So that's all we're gonna add at this time, and then we're going to um, bring this to a simmer for about five minutes and then we will finish adding the rest of the ingredients uh friends i forgot to mention while this is simmering for five minutes i preheated my oven to 400 and i am going to go ahead and put my crouton or my toast because i'm the only one that's going to eat this i'm just doing one slice i just took one slice of the rye bread and put some cheese on it and i'm going to put that in the oven until the cheese is nice and melted um, but normally you would just put several slices with cheese on top and then you're going to cut it up and make croutons out of it but i'm just going to do a slice so i just wanted to quickly mention that so we can get that in the oven now all right my soup and my piece of bread is done at the same time so i thought i'd take it out give you a quick look I'm just going to sit it back here for now and now our soup. All right. Nice. Okay. The heat is on low. Let me go grab my sauerkraut real quick. Put that in. And as I had mentioned, here is my strainer with my sauerkraut. Put that in real quick. Oh, oh, nice. I'm excited. I was nervous. Now I'm excited. Oh, I hope this tastes good. <laughs> I really, really hope this tastes good. 
All right, so now I'm gonna go ahead and add my one and a half cups of cheese. I just went ahead and dumped that all out on the plate to make it easier for me. Okay, now let's stir that in really good and get it all melted. Oh, this really looks good. It looks good, gotta say. And then my husband and son both come in and said, what is that smell? Ew, what is that smell? <laughs> they both do not like the smell of sauerkraut or cabbage. Is that crazy? Crazy, crazy. All right, now I'm gonna go ahead and add in my corned beef. I sliced it very thin and then I just diced it up. Just like that. Oh, this does look good. Oh my goodness. All right, and then I'm just gonna add a little bit of salt and pepper for taste. Oh my. Oh, friends. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to turn off the heat now. I'm going to put my lid on and then just set it aside to keep it warm while I cut up my... Well, no, I don't think I'm going to cut my bread up. I might just leave it whole. But, all right, I think we're at the point that we need to do a taste test. All right, my friends. <laughs> I did cut up the bread and just kind of put it on top. I'm so excited and nervous at the same time. <laughs> oh, Lord, have mercy. Did you see that? It wasn't too bad, it was just a small little spill holding it from the bottom now. <laughs> I'm gonna taste it first without the bread. This spoon's too big, I need a smaller spoon. All right, I'm sorry. I have paralysis on the side of my mouth and it's really difficult for me sometimes using big spoon so this actually tastes like a Reuben sandwich friends it's just a soup on my word it tastes just like a Reuben sandwich the only thing that's throwing me off is that it's liquidy does that make sense so it throws me off when I put it in my mouth because of the texture because I'm expecting to chew because it tastes just like a Reuben sandwich. No joke. Let's try it with a piece of the bread. Oh, you gotta do it with the bread. Mm. Oh my word. No joke, no joke. You gotta have this with the bread. <gasps> mm. Mm, 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 mm. Oh my word, I'm blown away. I'm absolutely blown away. I really, really truly thought, I was nervous about making this. Really truly was nervous about making it because I kept thinking, there is no way, no way I can see this as a soup. I read all the reviews on this particular recipe and some other recipes. This one is the one that I chose just based off of all the reviews. And, um, as I'm making it, I'm still hesitant thinking, no, no, no. Friends, if you truly love Reuben sandwiches, you will absolutely love this soup. The only thing, and it's not a negative, is that when I put it in my mouth, it's liquidy and I was in my head, you know how the brain works, I was expecting to chew. When I took a bite with that piece of little crouton in there, <sighs> telling you, you've got to try it. I, I'm. I'm not steering you wrong on this one. You gotta, gotta try it. <laughs> Have to try it. 
So friends, thank you so much for joining me. I do appreciate it. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And don't forget to check me out over on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and Pinterest, as I am active on those social media sites every day as well. And also, please hit that little subscribe button as it does greatly help me out. And I'm also going to link this recipe in the description box. And I'm going to um, also link my... Um, Reuben casserole in the description box as well because I think you guys will enjoy that if you like Reuben sandwiches. So friends, thanks so much and I'll catch up with you next time. Bye.